stupid ideas made by your players that you had to deny to not break the game. I mean, but was it was it a fun idea? But was it a fun idea? Could that's you, would you, would always... you let me pull it off? Like, you know, let's be serious. Okay, you know, like, just because something isn't realistic doesn't mean it can't happen. That's what it always boils down to. Was it fun? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I, I'm okay with stupid ideas if you can pull it off and you got the dice rules to back it up. Yeah. Make the dice rules hard, of course, the yeah. more ridiculous it is. But, you know, okay, let, well, let's get, jump into it and see yeah. what actually, like, what actually people have came up with because you know find out it's gonna be it's gonna be bad one of my players asked for a skateboard in our DD game i was worried it might be too silly but then i took a look at myself and realized i had a fucking santa claus as a god was planning to use disneyland and the base pro pyramid as dungeon oh have you seen that megan okay so base pro is like a fishing shop in america right it's like a big like Oh it, yes, the, and, and it's in a pyramid. You yeah, know, no, it, yeah, and it used to be like a stadium or something, yes. but then they bought it over. Yes. It's in like Mississippi or somewhere <laughs> like that. I, I remember, I watched a video on it, I was like, how have I never heard about this? I only heard about it like last year. I was planning to make manipulation of the not baseball league a major plot point, so I realised it was totally okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, exactly, this is completely up to taste. Like, your DM has a wacky world, how wacky are you? Are you kind of wacky? Are you on the spectrum like me? You know, if people <laughs> want to have it wacky, you let them have it. The only thing with skateboards is, like, okay, I don't skate, but I know a few people that do. Do skateboards work? before like concrete and tarmac exists like does it work on cobblestone streets no i I remember seeing a guy going down cobblestone streets you know the one up belfast yeah around where the pubs and all are yeah 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 going down there and then he went arse over tit i believe that i just don't see it working but it's so uneven you just had a boom (laughs) (laughs) yeah okay so i'm a wizard with a spell book and all of that but what if instead of that i have a microchip and every spell is actually a technology-based device that only I can control. It's only fluff, of course. No, sorry, you can't know what spell I am casting because I'm literally a jetpack. You Me. don't know what that is. <laughs> nano machine, nano machine, some. <laughs> No, sorry, you can't steal my book because it's a chip implanted in my brain. No, sorry, I don't need somatic or material components. I hate this shitter, so you always say, it's just fluff only. But then expect 1001 advantages that affect the actual room. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I Okay, so I've gone into this a few times. So a character that I played for a very long time, uh, Gobby, pirate, um, goblin, swashbuckle and rogue. So, of course, they come with the hand crossbow, and essentially what I did was, like, you can't have a pirate without, like... A pirate leg. A pirate leg. You need to have a pirate And, like, you know, what would make a pirate leg cover than having, like, an actual, like, you know, like a matchbox or something? Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Now, of course, a lot of DMs are just not going to have that, mm-hmm. so I just said to them, like, is it okay if I could least skin it and then if you want you can add in noise effect mm-hmm. it's up to you if you want to do that like yeah. you know so i'm actually like putting it in and also giving myself a negative negifier yeah at the same yeah. time and most but people it's still are, cool. <laughs> yeah exactly it means i get what i want and you know it, i don't mind taking a wee bit of a neg- negative if it means i get something cool yeah you know what i mean you can't you like it's a give and take relationship yeah if you're de- if you're if your your dm needs needs a wee blowy you know you, you do what you gotta do man okay Player climbed a building, leapt off the building and onto the enemy and wanted to pin him to the ground with his weight, all in one round. Said enemy was moving through a crowd in the dark, so the player's action was used to spot him. Player- uh, I don't know if that's an action. Looking for, I don't know. I wouldn't say that's an action. <laughs> Player essentially wanted to restrain his target for free, despite having no abilities to allow him to do so in the first place, as well as being a halfling using slow fall to avoid damage, so hardly possessing the momentum necessary. I I had the player make a dexterity check to control his fall, had the enemy take half the fall damage the player would, and fall prone, making him easy prey in the next round. The player got pissy when I tried to explain that, allowing him to take multiple actions and the turn wasn't fair on the other players. I wouldn't consider that, I would consider that one action though, because he's falling onto him. Yeah, I'm okay, so I'm not going to consider, like, you know, looking for them. I think, like, you know, okay, it depends how dark it is. Maybe you could be, maybe a perception check. I don't really think it needs a perce- well, perception check. I suppose it's check. all in the moment. I, I don't mm-hmm. think it needs a perception check. No. If you really want to, you can have that. Um, I don't know, I think jumping on someone, like, you know, if you're it's landing on death. someone's head, I it's think... It's just a death check? 
yeah, I think you're going to like land on top of them anyway. And well, I suppose they are a halfling, so I suppose it isn't guaranteed and that they're going to go so down. Full. All I'm saying is, if I jumped on top of someone from off a building, I think they're going on the ground. Just saying, yeah. guys. Like, I don't think for me, I, maybe you could argue the grappling, but they're get, definitely getting knocked on the yeah. hole. Maybe the grappling. Okay, you know what? Yeah, grappling two turns, fine. It's tough to reward creative thinking whilst not breaking the game. I had another player choose to hammer silver pieces into a wooden club because he didn't want to fork out for a silvered weapon. The party was expecting to fight a werewolf. I had to homebrew a means of simulating coin attrition through being bent out of shape during construction and snapped slash lost when using the club, just so it wasn't unfair to those who did silver the weapon. Yeah, that is, yeah. I find that that's Yeah, that's a hard one. That, because if someone did fork out the money and they did go ahead and do it, you know, and then you give you know, the other person like a cheap option, then it's like, well, why didn't we not do that as well? Almost, it's kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, actually, I get that. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a hard one it. to work. That's a really hard one to work. I had a player in a 3.5 D&D game who wanted to do some weird anime thing where his first level character would be able to absorb monsters and add their special abilities to his own while increasing the size until he reached Gargantuan. Where, where is the size? Where are we talking? Are we Peter ta- K in <laughs> oh, yes, Peter- Doctor Who. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he didn't want to hear anything about game balance. He had already come up with a balancing mechanism where his character would randomly explode and deal on average 12d4 damage to everyone in a 200 radius, except himself. That's a bit... Look, if you're going to explode, you're hurting yourself, man, okay? He would just lose size and mass. Bullshit. When I pointed to him, when I pointed out to him that this would kill the entire party several times over, it was clear he hadn't even considered the other player. Is he wanting to be Akira? Me with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, it is. He with that hammer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If any of you guys don't remember, we've told the story a few times. Megan got, I can't remember the name of the hammer, but it was like, a th- it was, it's, it's essentially it works as Thor's hammer. Yeah, basically. Essentially. And it knocks everyone flat and we on the hole. stuck hall. in. It was a tiny little hallway. We were stuck in and, hallway and. Um, what was it, Mimics? No, no it was... No, um, it, it, oh, they were like maggot monster creatures yeah. like wearing hoods and stuff. I can't but remember. But there was like two little ones and a big one. Yeah, there was. And we all had low health anyway and I was like, you know what? Well, we Bang! Did- <laughs> on the ground! I mean, it did work. Like, you know... Anyway, he well, knocked well, what we, everybody prone. The thing was, what we were really relying on was the conceives and what we really wanted was to knock the monsters out and hopefully, and we just hoped for the best with me and our conceive. Yeah. Didn't really work out very well. No. Didn't work no. out very well at all in the slightest, if I'll be honest with you guys. Right, you slimy, huey maggots. We has been working hard at Neckbeardia to get the bestest little people that monies can buy. We got all the boys here. We got the boys, the lizard boys, uh, vampire boys, all the boys over at Neckbeardia. Oh, we also got some pretty girls, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't really make out which one's the boys and which one's the girls sometimes. <laughs> but oh, anyway, I need more money to get more darker, so get on over and order some now, you filthy pigs. Every video that we post, we're going to be giving away all of our homebrew content to one lucky winner. Every video. All you have to do to be in with a chance to win is to be subscribed, leave a comment, and like this video. And today's lucky winner is... This guy! Well done! Well done! To claim your prize, just send an email to neckbeardiacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Doing a continuation of a previous campaign where everyone had to be their old PC. One of my friends really wanted to play as a new character he made up. Was unsure about it at first but he really wanted to play something else so I let him. Asked several times if he's 100% sure that's what he wants. He says yes. Decides to use the opportunity of him not using the OG character to make the plot about saving said character or friend from a deranged warlord who has mind controlled him. Start writing my campaign and planning the whole story out. Message from my friend. Hey, I changed my mind. I do want to play as my old character again. Is that cool? I told him no. <laughs> I'm not going to rewrite all my ships. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly. Like, the, like, I think the DM was very kind. He decided, you know what? No, but no like, I've already spent all doing this, Samuel. No, but, but he's already, like, you know, like, the guy came to him with an idea and he was like, you know what? Okay, yeah, sure. I'll work with you. Mm-hmm. And then he does decide to work with you. 
And he's like, you know what, actually, I'll go out and incorporate this as much as I can. And then you're like, hmm. You know, what do yeah. you do? Like, you know, it's not I easy. Know. Stupidity can be fun. You just can't make it easy. Players get a sturdy dwarven wagon as an early quest reward. Ranger gets the bright idea to reinforce the side so that he can use it as a proper cover. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> right, okay. All right, that weighs it down so you won't be able to carry much without getting a second horse. Player gets the bright idea to just turn the thing into a tank. They invest a good third of their gold on giving this thing a shell of armour plating. It's too heavy now for one horse. You'll need another. Player gets a second horse. Gets ambushed on the road. Goblin arrows plink off the armoured side. Goblin kills the horses and tries to smoke the party out. Party decides they need an internal power source. They find out about giant anthropods that are distant evil dwarf kingdoms used to pull super heavy loads. Party spends a stupid amount of money to get one of those. It's a baby. They spend months raising it to full size. Party hollows out the middle of their cart so that the anthropod can pull it from within. Barely room inside for the party. Guns are very primitive in this setting but the party spends what little money they have left on buying a modest cannon. The first time they fire it, it fills the cabin with smoke and makes their <laughs> anthropod panic. Oh no. They mount the cannon on top and use mage ham to fire and reload. Bearing some minor changes, the tank is complete. Soon the campaign changes from murder hobos to tank marks. <laughs> Nobles and merchants alike seek to hire the services of hev- or fiery armoured death wagon. Eventually the campaign comes towards its close. The big bad moves his evil ritual location out of his hideout to the top of a fucking mountain just so that the party can't bring their tank. They spent every ounce of gold that they made with said tank to hire a dragon to fly, fly them to the top of the mountain just so that they could use their shitty cannon to shoot the big bad in the face. Tank campaign was unironically one of the best campaigns I ran. There you go. Look, see, that's what you need. <laughs> like, that's fun. Exactly. <laughs> I, like, I'm down for that. Honestly, that sounds like... Make a wagon a tank? <laughs> yeah. Look. I mean, look... It's possible, you know. That's. A, I'll. I'll give you. No, actually, I'll save it. Unexpected to the end. tank is always the best tank. Yeah. <laughs> I want to play a librarian. Sounds cool. Like an Indiana Jones type or a space marine librarian. Can I use homebrew? What do you mean my character's too powerful? Just make everyone else more powerful to compensate. <laughs> this game has bionic arms. That means I can give myself as many arms as I want, right? <laughs> And the most stupid idea of all, can we play 5th edition? <laughs> I mean, look, uh, at the minute we're actually playing, uh, we just started, we did character creation for Only War, Dark Heresy campaign. I'm really looking forward to it. We really only did the first, it was just session zero. And uh, I think everyone, like, you know, there wasn't too many stupid ideas that we put out, if I'll be completely honest mm-hmm. with you. Oh, Megan, I forgot to tell you about my character, though. Did I tell you about my character? You kind of skimmed over it. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give you this. So the DM was okay with it, but it was only one thing that he was like, James, that's good deck. I'm picking someone else, even though I think... Who runs it? Uh, mittens. mittens. Okay, so what we were doing is, so I decided I want to play a paranoid schizophrenic. And of course, that's the same character that I played in the All Centaur Party. If you guys watch the live streams, essentially that's what I wanted to play. Mm-hmm. The guy had a grenade launcher, I wanted the same. I ended up going for a missile launcher instead. But anyway, anyway, so I was going through character creation, rolled a few parks and all that, and I got loyal, and I decided to pick up a looter, like a, someone to help me, like, you know, with my weapon, and it gives, essentially, I get a free action, so I get to reload the missile launcher for free which mm-hmm. is pretty sweet okay. but again it got loyal on it I was like oh my god I've turned into you know the you know the guy from Mad Max you know the gay one from Mad Max Fury Road and he has like the wee femboy on the back oh yes with the, with the blonde hair yeah that's it that's how <laughs> I've decided like, you know what I've got incredibly loyal to my femboy okay <laughs> so that's what I'm taking essentially <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going for however I did say it's like so you yeah. basically got, got like a wee golf caddy yeah I've got a golf caddy essentially that's what I've got but the golf caddy picked up the um, personality trait of deserter, and I was like, "Oh man, that's gonna be a nice oh one. mate." So they're gonna keep kind of going away from me, so they don't they don't love me. But I, I'm first Google over to them. Shackle them, do you? Yeah, I think I might have to do Get something. Get a like... shackle for yourself and tie around. <laughs> yeah. Now then you'll be walking about looking like a gimp. <laughs> yeah, will be. Well, Give like... him a mask. <laughs> yeah. With well, yeah. Well, we do have gas masks as part of our standard yeah. standard starting See? equipment. So you know, maybe we could do something with that. But uh, and it's always a good ploy to shove into a dungeon first or shove yeah. into someone. So there was there was two things that Teal, oh not Teal, sorry, it was Mittens, well it wasn't fussed on. There was one where I said, um, so I hate the Antichrist. It's like, James, you do 
you know the Antichrist doesn't exist. And for you guys, it's like, what are you on about? That's 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 chaos. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, you need to be a bit more specific. It's like, okay, I'll go with Zeech. Right? <laughs> Zeech is the Antichrist and, for me, okay? <laughs> So, of course, it, it's Zeech. <laughs> so I went with Zeech as my, and it's like, like, well, what do you have any like little ambitions? I was like, well, we oh, are boy. we are mechanized. Uh, we come from a mechanized battalion. I think driving a beam breed would be pretty fucking cool, man. And he's like, really a beam breed? It's like, yeah, why not? And he's like, yeah, okay, that does sound actually really cool. And then everyone else was like, you know what? Actually, that'll be really cool as well. Can we join in? <laughs> so everyone, <laughs> everyone was like, yeah, we gotta drive a beam breed. <laughs> So we'll see what happens anyway. Look, I thought I might as well let you guys know. Um, this is a monthly game though, so it's not going to be very many updates. But like, what can you do? Um, but yeah, I think that's where we're going to end. I'll tell you guys my stupidest one. Although it wasn't really the stupidest because I thought it, it was. Re- it was actually really smart. Okay, so you made a lot of money. In, in the spell jammer game, um, I was a ship captain. And to be a captain, you need to have a lot of money because spell jammers cost an absolute ton to maintain. And there was a lot of people that were working out all different ways of making money in the game. So we ended up playing Tomb of Horrors, right? <laughs> and if you're sm- familiar with Tomb of Horrors, you guys know the gender bending room in Tomb of Horrors, yeah? The room that you walk into and you get to take psychic damage and you um, you come out with like, a pair of tits or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I decided that, uh, I, since I tested it on myself and I went in, I was like, oh god, okay, well, I went, uh, thankfully I went back in and went back out. Yeah. And then reversed the process. Gobby came out with a massive pair of tits. <laughs> yeah, fine set of, yes. fine set of titties. Um, but anyway, so I went uh, and I decided, you know what, maybe Teal, would it be cool if I spent maybe 10,000 gold on, on a bit of a marketing campaign, Gobby's back alley surgeries? And uh, you know what? I made a lot of money and I provided the Elven District with a lot of uh, lo- new fanboys for life, you know? Uh, not fanboys, but new. Um, What's the correct term? I don't know. A new lease of life for like, some we're, people. We're, 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 we're going to get shit. You were going to get shit up, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what we managed to make, and that was my way of making money in that campaign for a fair amount of time, and I worked it. Quite and then nice, you ended so. up cutting out the gender banding room. I don't. I, I, I tried to. Oh, you tried. I tried to, to yes. but it was to do with. Um, no, no. So what happened was, um, Tim Horrors was on like a skull comet mm-hmm. of sorts because in space. And what I decided to do was I um, I got in contact with a few dwarves and we managed to strap a spell jammer to yeah. it. So we turned the comet into like a doomsday fortress. Yeah. So I got a, you know, we never quite got to the point where... Made a lot of money though. <laughs> yeah, it did. We never got to the point where I got to turn it into a little Death Star. But it was a pretty cool grand fortress that yeah. I really enjoyed and I had a lot of fun with. But uh, we never got really, like the campaign end, so yeah, we never got to see fully to the end. Well, wait, you, you, you know any stupid ones? I can't think of any. No, that was no, it. that was, that, yeah, that was the, probably the, the hammer or the hammer. The hammer is probably the one yeah. that sticks out to me anyway. Yeah. Um, do you have any like weird ideas or concepts that your DM has just been like, you know what? Actually, I'll let you work away with that. Have they just turned around and said, no, that's stupid? Why are you saying that? I mean, that happens, but you know, you got to chance your arm. What's the harm in yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, let us know. Uh, I'd love to hear your ones. And if we get enough of them, then we'll do a video, so we will. Mm-hmm. Um, I really want to do... We need to do more of them. Comment videos. Comment videos. Yeah, we'll, we will know, do more we'll of do, them. We'll do one tomorrow, actually, yeah. will we? We'll, do that, we'll record that next. But while you're down there, check out the links to the website, guys, because it really helps us out. Like, incredibly helps us out. And hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. All those moments will be lost in time.